Hey everybody, Joe here once again out in the woods of Hoosier National Forest on what feels like day 8 million and 35 of quarantine. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for tuning in once again. Uh, I'm here with a new microphone that I'm trying out, so let me know how I sound. I'm getting dragged into the 21st century, kicking and screaming into the digital age, but I'll get there. Uh, today, I want to talk about what I played on my last video, uh, Autumn Leaves with the five mallet extended steel pan setup that we have here, uh, along with the percussion setup. Uh, links for the one-man percussion setup duo are here, uh, and links for the other two-person uh, performance with the extended pan and the perk setup are here. So check those out if you haven't already. Uh, what I played in the last video, and what I'm gonna demonstrate today, is on the Steve Laurie 26 inch solid hoop C lead. So this is going from middle C up about two and a third octaves. And these custom tenor bass that he built for me uh, that have a range of about a ninth that go from a low F2 up to a G. So to get started with an extended pan multi mallet setup, there's quite a few steps. I don't wanna make this seem like it's a weekend adventure. This is gonna take quite a bit of time. It's taken me years and years to come up with all of this. So first, you gotta be proficient with two on any pan, lead pan in this case, or double tenors, double seconds, whatever your instrument of choice may be. But you have to be proficient with two before you can even go on to play with four. So once you go four on a lead pan, you need to spend quite a bit of time getting used to that. Um, I go on the pinky here. A lot of people go in the middle here, especially if you're a marimbist or a vibist already. That might be more comfortable for you. Um, there's no um, standardization with mallet playing uh, because it's fairly new on steel pan. Um, I spent my doctoral research and dissertation on writing a method book for four mallet pans. So if you're really interested in doing that uh, on tenor pan, uh, hit me up, write me. I'll hook you up. I haven't published the book yet. I need to get around to doing that at some point. So once you've gotten used to this, and gotten really comfortable playing four mallet lead pan, you can start to think about extending it and expanding your range. In the Calypso video that I made, link here, hopefully, I played with three and then added a bass mallet to be able to play these lower notes. So I can still play chords and I can move around and play bass and it's very comfortable because I'm holding the bass mallet in this inside position so I have a lot of control with it. Every once in a while if I don't need to play a ton of bass notes and I need more dexterity to play faster lines on the tenor pan, I will switch it around and put the bass mallet on the outside, but it's not quite as comfortable. It takes a lot more muscle to do that, so I try to avoid that when I can. Instead, what I came up with is this crazy guy, which is an extended outside mallet that I've then put a tenor bass end on, on the outside, on the reverse side of this mallet. That gives me the chance to still play four note chords and thicker harmonies on the tenor pan, but pick out bass notes along with it. So I can catch notes down here. and still play four note chords, which is super useful if you're playing jazz and calypso. One thing that's useful for this in either configuration, the five mallet or the four mallet extended range, is you can play shell harmonies like you would in jazz where you're playing the root, third, and seventh. And you can play those simultaneously and imply a chord and not have to play a ton of other notes. <laughs> What's really nice about a circle of fifths steel pan is all of your minor seventh chords and major seventh chords, your third and seventh are right next door to each other. So you can keep your hand closed in a closed position and not have to arpeggiate. So when I'm playing 
a tune solo that way, I'll often play those in harmony. And then if I get a half diminished seventh or a dominant seventh or an extended harmony where notes get more spread out and I have to play in an open configuration, then I'll play alternating a bass and chord. And with those training wheels, you can comp a jazz tune and not have to go any further than that. You can obviously go much further than that, but that's a great place to start. And let's look at the harmonies for Autumn Leaves with that right there. So that's how shells work if you're going to play a root, third and seventh, uh, and arpeggiating dominant chords, extended chords. Check out uh, Autumn Leaves here to see how to implement melody and solo along with that to get the full picture. A quick note before we finish about technique, as this is pretty weird. Uh, obviously, you can't use a normal mallet stroke if you're going to be playing on the reverse side of the mallet. It's a rotational motion from the wrist so you still have control over the mallet it's not coming straight down I'm not trying to punch the pan and it's not to the side it's a little bit of both so I'm doing this and opening my hand a, a little bit kind of a palm heel move to be able to strike those notes it takes a bit of practice to get used to uh, just like all of this so that's what I'm doing here. Obviously, you can make up your own as you go, whatever instruments you have available to you to be able to put together. These tenor bass are fairly unique, uh, but you can do it with other tenor bass. You can do it with uh, double guitars. You don't necessarily need to be playing lead. I like this setup personally because it's a smaller amount of pans that you one have to move, but also you can reach everything uh, as you start adding more and more pans, it gets more and more complicated. Uh, so I try to keep things as consolidated as possible when I'm playing. But that's what I'm doing with five mallet pan on an extended range. Uh, keep looking for other videos. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Keep practicing weird stuff. Stay safe during this pandemic. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys again. Till next time.